for approximately two years. I was a paid FBI operative operating in the American Indian movement at the highest levels. After Doug Durham was exposed, the paranoia began. Everybody was an informant, and I think a lot of people start using it. If they didn't like somebody, they would just say that, and of course it would spread like wildfire, you know, moccasin telegraph. There was people who uh, postured and said things like, well, maybe Doug Durham and Anna May were some kind of a team that infiltrated at the top level. She knew what was happening, the big picture of it all, because everybody during the Wounded Knee Trials and all that, everybody was celebrating in, in the wrong way. And she would kind of get disgusted with it. And so I guess that was the main reason why we'd pull back. And she was, she would get upset and just leave. And then we wouldn't see her. You gotta understand that there was this period there after Wounded Knee where some of these guys were getting pretty outrageous, quite frankly. Quite frankly. I mean, you know, some of these guys, you know, 26 women, 26 children by, you know, how many different wives. And, uh, there was a lot of, you know, drinking. I, you know, I saw people that were drunk for a week and then sober up the next day they were down at Sundance you know <sighs> I'm serious you know so there was a lot of for me a disillusionment about these you know how could they do that her own knowing the leadership within the American Indian movement was a threat not just to the men but to the women too where Anna May was taken aside and farmed in New Mexico by Bob Robidoux, Dino Butler and Leonard Peltier I met her under not too pleasant circumstances. Uh, my cousin Leonard uh, told me that we were going for a ride in a car. Robodeau was with Leonard Peltier, a symbol of the movement who has spent the last 24 years in jail. She just said that they were asking her questions like, you know, um, who are you? Where do you come from? Anime Pikmin? Yes. What tribe are you from? Uh, I'm from the Mi'kmaq tribe of uh, Nova Scotia, Canada. Um, well, um, are you an informer? If anybody's going to say, yeah, I am, by the way. You know? But they, I, I got the feeling from her you know, that it was a very scary moment. One of the leaders, I overheard them talking about Annie Mae, and they said that she was an FBI informant. Did you ever think she was an informant? No. Was she ever questioned about that, being an informant? By she wasn't anything? questioned by me. What about Leonard? Did he have... Oh, no, I don't... I don't... No, I mean, I, I don't believe he did. I don't believe that. We both solidly trusted Annie Mae. They didn't trust her. Do you mean, I, um, they didn't trust her? Kamuk Banks, who has never spoken publicly about the inner workings of AIM, has a particular reason for remembering that incident. I knew that she had been questioned, which was in the same time I had learned about her relationship. I learned about her relationship maybe the day before with Dennis, and I was very upset with her. Then the next day I had heard that she had been interrogated. We were going to take Anime Aquash and question her. And uh, because some people in the movement felt that she was an informant. We uh, took Anime by car away from camp and uh, stopped the car. And Leonard and uh, Anna Mae walked away from the car and over a little hill. The gun was put up next to her head by Leonard, and that comes from four different sources. And the next source, of course, was Anna Mae, and Anna Mae was the one that said, uh, if you believe that I'm an informer, then you might as well go ahead and pull the trigger. Those weren't exact words, but close enough to it. Somebody that she had considered 
a close friend had gotten drunk and held a gun to her head and that he said, um, Anna Mae, everybody's saying that you're, that you're giving us up and that everywhere you go, somebody's arrested. She told him, um, if you believe that about me, then I give you permission to pull the trigger. I actually didn't find out the, some of the details of that in particular interrogation until I talked to Iris Thundercloud a couple of years ago. Like I said, when we were comparing notes and finding out that we were <clears throat> both interrogated about the same time from the same people. And uh, it was Iris that told me that they put a gun in her mouth. You know, hey. She convinced them that she was okay. What did you think? What, was she an informant? No. <laughs> no. I know her too well, and I trust my judgment. And at that time, you heard rumors, you know, well, she got out of jail, and they just let her go. And, and I remember Annie Mae telling me that they were setting us up. When the kids were playing, then we had a chance to talk. And at that point, she had told me that they, uh, they, um, the American Indian Movement had, uh, were you know, talking amongst themselves, whoever these people were, and they uh, thought that she was an informer. I said, well, why are you going back? She said, I have to go back, and I have to just let them know that they're wrong. So she was fully aware that, uh, that by being a part of our group that she was putting her life in jeopardy, and she understood that fully. The American Indian Movement at that time was well aware of what happened to Anna May, and two of the leaders ordered her death. Vernon Balcourt made the phone call to the House on Rosebud, which was my brother's house. Clyde Bellacourt took the, took the call from Vernon and then issued the order for her death, her murder. She was brought here uh, by members of the American Indian Movement and, and she was executed right on top of this room. She was shot in the back of the head, fell over the bank and then laid where she was found and, and basically left to die. I feel that it was uh, a result of uh, paranoia uh, amongst people within the American Indian Movement that she was an informant. There's no question in my mind Anna Mayakwa should be alive today if they did not believe that she was an FBI informant. Was she? She was not an FBI informant. Definitely was not. She's never just another dead Indian to us. She's our mother. <laughs>